My name is Angela Merrith. I um, work at Providence as Dr. Rhonda Meadows, Chief of Staff, and um, Joyce and I are colleagues. So I'm Joyce Agen. I am a manager of philanthropic system for Providence St. Joseph Health, uh, Southern California, um, with the Regional Foundation. Do you have your own experiences with disparities in receiving health care? Yes, many stories <laughs> for yeah. myself and for so many people that I know. It's kind of striking talking to friends of mine that look like me and talking to my friends and colleagues that don't look like me and their experiences with the healthcare system. Because if you operate in a silo and you only speak to people that look like you and interact with people that look like you, you tend to believe that that's just the way it is. Is there a, a particular story that you would be willing to share with us today about a health disparity that you experienced? My husband and I have three children. Um, we have an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 5-year-old. And um, as most expecting parents, we had our, uh, we thought we were pregnant. We went and did all the tests and, you know, went in to go and be seen by um, an OBGYN. And we were told that before we were able to select our primary OBGYN, we would have to go through each and every practitioner in the practice, which at that particular time, there were 10 of them. And so we would have to go through all of them and identify which one we preferred. And basically, that would take me to pretty much the very end of my pregnancy before I was even able to settle in on someone. And so um, there were were even issues that I started to have along my pregnancy that I thought were normal because I read it in a book and it said it was kind of normal. So I never really knew to ask or to share with them because I was told that that's what I should do. So as the pregnancy went on and as I made it through all 10 practitioners, I came to a point where eventually I got to settle on one person that I met in my fifth month um, who I thought was the loveliest OBGYN I had ever met. Fast forward to um, the very end, my due date was December 30th. On December 28th, I went into labor, started having contractions, went into the hospital and found out I had absolutely no amniotic fluid in my uterus and that I had had a slow leak the entire time that no one noticed and my water had not broken. Well, they had to break my sack and infuse me. Unfortunately, the practitioner that I had selected and I loved, she had worked 36 hours prior. So she was unable to be there for me. So one of the doctors that I did not like and I did not have a very good opinion about just so happened to be the one that was there. I was in labor for almost 32 hours and people were coming in and out as they were infusing me the entire time. I got an infection. My son also got an infection. It was an infection that went into his lungs and then um, somehow went into his spine. I delivered him safely um, after 32 hours of labor. I had him in the room with me. Uh, one of the nurses came in and noticed that he was very labored in his breathing. They swept him away. I didn't see him again for almost eight hours. Um, because they had to work him up and get him stable before they would let us even touch him. But I did become hypervigilant in my second pregnancy. So here we are, I'm starting to have similar symptoms at 36 weeks where I feel little drips and dots and things like that that are kind of coming and I'm really not sure what to do. So I'm sharing them with my doctor and she is being just as vigilant as I am. At 38 weeks, I started to see more fluid and she said if it became more pronounced, you should come in. And I thought at some point, because my water never broke the first time, I didn't really know what that experience was. So I went in because I water all over me. And so I assumed my water had broke. And so I was definitely better off with our third pregnancy, which came four and a half years later, about advocating for myself. But it was the first time, I think, in my life where I realized I had to speak up. Thank you so much for being a caregiver at Providence and for Thank being willing, again, to share your story. I know it's not easy. Thank you. Thank you, Angela.